I found him yesterday. I found him in a hole on 15. Yeah, that one. Some boys chased him in a cut. It was based on a lot of memories, um, particularly the memories of myself, my mother, um, and, my, and, my, and my childhood growing up in Liberty City. There's a lot of me in it, but there's also a lot of Barry Jenkins in it. I think when you come to a piece about uh, self-discovery, it's very difficult to leave yourself out. And so one of the things I think Barry was very generous in and very, you know, brave in is putting himself in the film as well. One of the most striking things about the film is the very tender depiction of the mentor to, to the young Sharon. Mm. Um, he's a drug dealer, yeah. but he's got that tenderness. Well, one of the things I like to say is uh, he, was, he was nurturing and mentoring and he was a drug dealer instead of but, right? So because but tends to dismiss uh, one part or the other. And one of the things I didn't want to do was, do, was, was portray him as one or the other. That he was both to me. Let your head rest in my hand. Relax. I got you. I promise. I'm not gonna let you go. I think we should think of all people as human beings, um, capable of bad and capable of good. And if we want those people to do more more good than bad, then we have to think of them as human beings, right? My mother's boyfriend, a uh, man named Blue. Uh, was a drug dealer who was very kind to me, who taught me how to swim, who taught me how to ride a bike, who taught me how to make salmon croquette, right? And you don't think of a drug dealer being able to do that for a six-year-old kid. Um, the film, of course, is a lot of it's dealing with masculinity. Mm. Um, uh, and it is very striking that it, it, and it's not just in your film, there are other books, accounts of young gay, young gay children in underprivileged communities mm. where there is a, a particularly strong kind of masculine ideal. Well, think about the way in which the, the, the system is structured, yes? And so you say access to privilege is based on brute strength in a way. Now that's the ideal we share to everybody. Think about the way in which we look at uh, women in our society. What's the worst thing I can call you? It's a girl, right? And so that trickles down into all communities and we think, how do we maintain access? How do we get more privilege? Well, if the more masculine I am, I, I may not have the means or the money to, to get to uh, the privilege of life, but if I'm, if I'm more masculine, then I'm closer to the power slash access and the way the society works. And so one of the problems is we sort of keep um, harping on this idea uh, of masculinity or hyper masculinity or to more importantly toxic masculinity right because there's nothing wrong with wanting to play sports or uh, being rough and tumble but then when we we honor that above uh, uh, wanting to be caressed or nurtured or gentle then we start creating these binaries that don't really exist so you can have a drug dealer who drives around in a very macho car who's also nurturing and also gentle and also teaches the person that they can be themselves fully and so the film didn't, the film wasn't created to tackle these ideas. It but just it does tackle them. It tackles it them tackle. because they are a part of life. So your name Blue? <laughs> nah. At some point you gotta decide for yourself who you wanna be. Can't let nobody make that decision for you. Every interview at the moment comes back to Trump. Is there some link between that theme that you've explored in the film mm. and the election of Donald Trump? Is this a, uh, uh, is it that a lot of other low-status people, you know, have felt basically this man is speaking for us, and he's got a kind of masculinity which we admire and we like? Is, I'm just wondering whether there's some some link there between. Well, the world in which we live in, in terms of the misogyny and the, op the oppression of women and the oppression of, of feminism, um, the, the idea, uh, these, these xenophobic ideas have been there for a long time. If anything, this film should show you that if this stuff was happening to me in my childhood, and I'm 36 now, we'll be 37 this year, that means 20 years ago, we were still wrestling with these same ideas, that that poverty that existed then still exists now. Who is you, Sharon? We talk about films being a way to uh, escape, to go to another person's life or experience, um, which is important. Um, and this film allowed me to do something similar to that, 
but in a different way. So we see Trevante Rhodes as Chiron all grown up. And, you know, he puts on this kind of masculine facade in order to survive in that world. Um, and then we look in his eyes and we see in that man's eyes that he, no matter what he does, is always going to be right there, that vulnerable person that he's always been. And so no matter how many accolades that I get, no matter how far I travel from Liberty City or if I'm in Stratford-upon-Avon or in London or in Canada, um, no matter where I sort of put myself on a platform or, people, or other people do the same, it doesn't, none of that vulnerability has left me. Within, within me and within the performance of masculinity that I have or femininity that I have and the education that I may tout, it's still that scared little boy. And that never really goes away. You're up for an Oscar. You make you. I mean, the film is up for what eight nominations. Yeah, and, 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 and you've got a screenplay, joint screenplay one with Barry Jenkins. Yes, sir. Um, are you going to be that vulnerable, scared child if you win the Oscar? Absolutely, absolutely. And I think that's the thing that's in incredible. I think you are watching two young men from a very difficult part of the world who are still carrying that world with them, and sp particularly inside of them, uh, go to a place that we never thought we'd get to. And isn't that the story? <laughs>